Hi everyone, in this video, we are going to be looking at another question on data processing practical for NECO. So in this question, we are going to be use, making use of Microsoft Excel to perform some tasks. So let's quickly go through the questions. We are told that we should use Microsoft Excel to perform the task. So we have a table here. So this is what we are going to do. So first of all, let us go and launch Microsoft Excel. So to launch Microsoft Excel, you can use the start button here, yeah? or you can just type in what you want to do here, just search from here. So you can go to start, type Excel from here. So when you type Excel, it's going to appear here or here. So just click on it, then it will come up. Then it's going to show you this. If you are not there, your Excel is not registered. So you close this, then you're going to open this. So this is your Microsoft Excel window. So let's go back to the question and see what they ask us to do. So we have this table here. Now these are the application. So you say using merge and center. Merge says A1, B1, C1, D1, E1, F1. So this is A1, B1, C1, D1, E1, and F1. So we're going to this place. We're going to merge those cells together. So let's go to that cell so go to a cell so this is a1 starting from here so go to this b1 c1 d1 e1 f1 so that's what they ask us to do so you are going to merge and centralize it so this is merge and centralize it just click on it so it's going to merge and centralize that so let's go back to the question so we are asked, okay, to merge says A1, B1, okay, merge as center. So that's what we have done. Highlight the cell range. So I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave this part two for the end of the, uh, at the end of the table, then I'll come back to part two. So they will have to type in record in merge cells A1 in uppercase and body. So the cells that we have merged, we are going to type uh, school record there. So let's go to that uh, to our uh, cell and type school record here. So we're going to write this in uppercase. So I'm going to put my phone and my laptop on uppercase. So I'm going to write school record. Type school record. So you can highlight it and click both from here. So it's going to become both or you can actually go this way first of all before you start typing click on board so you cannot start typing school records okay i think that would be the fastest way to type first of all put it on board then you type on it that way so let's go back to the question again so type the school record in the message upper case and body so that what we have done now re repeat the subheadings in A1 to F1 of the question paper into A2 to F2 of your worksheet in uppercase and bold it. So it means that these values here, dates, classes, number of students, number of class teachers, let's see if it average, we're going to put them in A from A2 to F2 the way they are like this. So we'll go back to our Excel. So this is what we have. We are starting from here and we are told that we are to bold it. So I'm, I can do this. I'll just align this. So F, put it on bold. So whatever I type inside of this is going to bold. So it's going to be on caps lock. So we have dates. Use your tab key to move it forward or your arrow keys. Then we have classes. Okay. Then we have the number of students. Okay, we can adjust this as we move on. Okay, next in D we have a um, number of class teachers. Okay, anyway, we can actually adjust this. Just tap on this here and move it to adjust. This you can do that. I wanted to leave it for the end of the but let's just adjust this. So we can also adjust this. Okay. 
so to accommodate the data that we have there. So let's uh, move on. So the next one on the, that place is okay. We have number of class teachers, then lesson fee. So if, if it's not enough, you just come to this part here, click on this, okay, and adjust a bit to accommodate this. So you can adjust from that place. And the last part is average age. So on this, I'm going to have average age. So again, I'm going to adjust this this way, okay. Okay, next. Okay, we have done this. So next, we have to specify the column width for all columns as 19. So I'm going to go back to the Excel worksheet and let's see. So the, all the column width is going to be 19. I mean, as well with this, okay, let me just adjust and highlight all of this. Okay, to, to some extent. So you come to this place. So we want to uh, change the color width. So you come to format here, this place where you have format here. Click on this. So you can see the column width here. You can do auto fit if they ask you to do auto fit. But we are not asked to do auto fit. So I'm going to click on column width here. And inside this uh, space here, you type 19. That's what they ask us to do. You hit enter, or you just click on OK. So that's uh, the column width done with that. So now let's go to the next part. Okay, for the next part, we are to Okay, we have specified column width. We have to utilize the items. Specify, okay, we have to utilize column titles in cell A2, B2, and C2. So we're going to do that now. So we have to utilize item in cell A2. This is A2 and B2. So I can just highlight this to this point A2, B2, C2. And you come to this place and click on this icon here. So that gives you the italic uh, form. Okay, so let's move to the next. Look at the next question. Okay, we have to format date column to day, month, and year. And we have to impute any date of our choice in date 1, date 2, and date 3. So we're going to do this. So if you look at this date 1 uh, is in column A3, date 2 is column A4. And column 8 5. So we're going to impute dates on this column 3, 4, and 5. Okay, so let's impute the date here. Yeah, so you can actually insert date from here from formulas, but you can also actually type in the date from there. Let's say, for example, I'm going to use O, let me use uh, the month and the date. The date we are starting with date. So let me say 27 06. 2023. 20, so now why I'm doing this is this since I've typed just click put this on this and just drag down like this. It's going to give you three separate dates. So we have date for this. So that's okay. Now let's go to the next question and see what they ask us to do. Okay, next we have to type in the date of resumption and propose date of mid-temple of your choice in the last two cells. On that date column in no particular, so if there's no particular, so you just type any date of your choice on that column. So we'll go to that column now and type the date, those columns and type the date. Okay, so we are here to type the date. In fact, I can actually just click on this and drag it to these two columns. So I have to separate it so I can come here and change them whatever I want to. Okay, so you can just click on this and change the date from here. Let's say this, I can change this to or any date that you like, 09. Let me change this to, let's say, 07. And you can also do the same for this, or you can just simply uh, type this on this. So this is, uh, you can also type, change this to, okay. Well, any other any data of your choice, go for let's say so let's say 10. This is uh, this is the uh, date of my choice, so I think that will be okay. Now, let's go to the next question and see what they ask us to do again. Okay, next in the class classes column, type GS1 to SS2 in each 
cell. So we're going to type that now. So this is our classes uh, colon. So we're going to type yes one. I'm moving down like this. So we have yes one, yes two, yes three. So you just come to this place. So why I'm doing this is that it's going to help you to make your work faster. Okay. I'm delete this. So we have SS1. Okay. Then we have SS2. So when you click and drag that, that it makes your work faster. So that's that for that. Now let's go back to the question. The next question is that in the number of student column, type in numbers between the range of 150 and uh, 200 exclusive. So I think we should omit 200, that's what that means. Anyway, you can just omit the, fir the first number and the last number to be sure of what you're doing. So I'm excluding 150 and 200 from that those numbers. So I'm going to type five numbers into that column, number of student what column. So this is so this is the number of student column. So I'm going to type let me just randomly pick numbers 160 and I'll move my arrow keys down. I'll type our uh, 170. Uh, next, I move my arrow keys down. I type 180. I move this down. I type 190. Okay, I think I can type any number that I like. Let me say 165. So these are the numbers I want to type randomly. That's the question. That's what the question says. So next. So next, in the name of class teacher column, type in the name of five of your classmates in upper case. So you're going to type names there, any name that you like, just, just type them there. Okay, so let's uh, fill this. Now, you notice that the class teacher's column is always not showing outside, and we have been given the width of the uh, cell that they ask us to use. So what I'm going to do is to review the full uh, number here. I'll just come to this place and reduce the size. Let's see, let me reduce it to 8. So, you see now it is, it, it is clear, now you cannot see it clearly, okay? So, now let's um, move on. So, we have to type any name of our classmate in uppercase. So, I'm going to type names that randomly pops up in my head. So, use the arrow key to move it downward. Okay? Okay, yeah, you are you are to add a so, uh, Sony, but because of time, let me just leave this here. Okay, so let's go to the next question. Okay, so we have to change all fonts to Tahoma. So let's go to the worksheet and change the font. So to change all font to Tahoma, I'll just click on this first cell here and I'll drag it to let me just drag it to any length so that in case there are spaces remaining. So you come to this place here, this this place here, just tap on this. And type T O so that's the home they hit the enter button. So these are the cases are now in Tahoma. Now you find out that some of the tests are hidden. So you again you can just go back to reduce the size so that you can see those size that you are not uh, seeing since we're not giving any particular size for the test. Okay, so let's go to the next question. Okay, we have to format the lesson fees column. With currency format, then add the narrow sign and type amount within the range of 10,000 and 20,000 to the to the end of the column. Okay, so let's uh, look at that. So under the lesson fee column, just tap on it like this. Then you come to this place, or on even on this part here, you can still do it. So push space and go to insert. Okay, then look at symbol. Then on this part here, search for the narrow symbol. Here you can see the narrow symbol here. Yeah, I just see it clearly here. It is here because I've used it before. If you have not used it, you can just scroll, uh, scroll through to find that narrow symbol by using this. Okay, so I have it here. So I'll just click on that, click insert, then I'll click on close. So that's my narrow symbol. 
you may want to put it inside a bracket, okay? Hold down your shift and then uh, put this this way, then click outside. So that gives you this. So we're going to enter those values now. We have to enter any values between the range of 10 to 10,000 to 20,000. So let me just put in 10,000. This is 10,000. To make my work is I'll just come to this place and drag it down like this. So I'll just come to this place, double click, change this to 2. I'll change this to 4. I'll double click on this, change this to 16, and then I'll change this to either 20 or 18,000. So that's within the range. So this is what is required. So when I'm dragging all of this, it makes my work faster instead of typing all over again. Okay. So let's look at the next question. So the next question is using AutoSum, find the total amount in the colon lesson fee. So let's go to that place. Okay, so this is uh, the lesson fee. So I'm going to come to this place and uh, come to formulas. Click on formulas and you can see auto sum here. Sum. So when you see this, you're going to hit what? Enter. So that's the uh, that auto sum of these numbers. Again, if you don't want to go through that way, you can also do this. Type in quarter and do sum. You have to sum this fast anyway. Sum, then hold your shift and put the this. Now look at this. The numbers that are summing together are this. They are E3 to E7. So you can put E3 to E7 and hit the enter key. So you see that you are going to have this exactly the same word. So let me delete that because we do not need uh, that. Okay. Okay, so that's that how to use the auto sum uh, feature here. Okay, key in five different ages in the average age column and it link them. So I'm going to write them in it link. So this is what I'm going to do. Okay, so we're keying five uh, average ages here. So this is what I'm going to do. I just I'm going to have select this and go to home, put it on it clicks first before I start to put my age. That will, in that way, you, it will be better for you. So let me put. For GS2, so let me put an average of 11, move it down. For GS2, I put an average of 12. For GS3, I put an average of 13. For SS1, I put an average of 14. And SS2, I put an average of 15. So, so this gives me my average. So let's look at the next question. So the last part of this question is to change the orientation to landscape and print out the hard copy. But remember that I have not done this. I have not put borders on or cell range 8 arrow at a time and by 6C. And so I'm going to put border on all of what we have done before I go back and change the rotation to the landscape. Then print out the hard copy. Okay, or I can change the rotation and then I'll put the border on that. So let's do that now. Okay, so let's now add the border. So I'm going to select the cells from here. I'm going to drag it until okay. I'm going to select it from here until this point here. Okay. So I'm going to put my border. This is your border distance here. This is this one. Then click on this button here to select border to cover every all border. So this is all borders. Okay. And then let's change the orientation. So this is page. I go to page layout to change the orientation. So this is on it. I click on this and this is landscape. Okay. After you have done that. You go to file, you can save your work if you want to. So you go to what? Print. So here you select your printers from here. Now I do not have an active printer, so I'm going to just save it as what? A PDF file. So I'm going to click on print. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to save it here as my project Excel. Okay, and save. So you can also save like this then before you print, but you can print it.